Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we're going to be classifying bonds based upon their electronegativity values. We're going to visit covalent bonds in terms of electronegativity. We're going to introduce polar covalent bonds for the first time, and also revisit our old friend ionic bonds. Just as a little refresher course for electronegativity, Earlier in the year when we studied the periodic table, we saw that the most electronegative elements were all located up in this corner here. Okay? These were small elements, and small elements tended to be pretty electronegative. So I'm going to write down high EN for electronegativity. Small elements, high electronegativity. And the reverse was true. Over in this corner over here, on this side of the periodic table, I had actually big elements with very large electron clouds, and they had very low electronegativity. And I'm using EN today to represent electronegativity. So just a quick refresher course in electronegativity. In addition, what is electronegativity? Let's just say I have two electrons that are being shared between two atoms. Electronegativity is the degree at which the electrons are being pulled towards each individual atom. So this atom has an electronegativity value and it is pulling its electrons close to it. Whichever element has the higher electronegativity value will win and pull the electrons their direction. One of the things we want to key in on here today is there's a difference we're talking about. I find, in, uh, before I need to go any further, when I reference a molecule such as a covalent compound, this right here is a good example of a, of a covalent compound. And I just want to stress that what we're talking about today is not the whole entire covalent compound. All right, what I'm talking about is actually the individual electrons that are in question, the bond. Okay? This is a covalent bond. Within my covalent compound, which is the whole entire structure, this whole thing is a covalent compound, within the covalent compound, I have two covalent bonds. Likewise, yes, this is a whole entire compound. These represent my shared pair of electrons. I just want to clarify that before we begin. Whenever you say something's covalent, I just want to clarify. We're actually today talking about the covalent bond, not the whole entire covalent compound. So we're going to find out today, is this a covalent bond, an ionic bond, or a polar covalent bond? So I want you to think of chemical bonding as kind of a degree of sharing. The thing that's trying to be shared, and this is trying to be shared, are those electrons right there. Okay, we were talking about getting an octet rule and having eight electrons in an outer shell. That's great, but the real question really comes down to is what is the degree that those electrons are being shared? They're only going to be shared evenly if they're shared by very, very similar sized elements. And as you see here, oxygen is definitely bigger than fluorine. Because it is bigger, it's going to have a lower electronegativity value. 4.0 is the highest value you can have on the Pauling scale. The Pauling scale measures electronegativity. And we're going to reference now these two numbers when we're trying to classify is it an ionic bond, a covalent bond, or a polar covalent bond. But it all starts here. How are those electrons being shared? Are they being shared evenly, unevenly, or actually just not even being shared? stolen. And we've used this word, excuse me, we've used this word in the past, transferred. All right, we're talking about ionic bonds. So these electrons have three scenarios. They are either one, shared evenly, two, shared unevenly, or three, they're going to be stolen altogether. And that's kind of the gist of where we're going today. Whenever I have the same sized element, such as fluorine and fluorine, this is a good example, this is F2, and the compound is called fluorine. Anytime I'm having the same size element, the same electronegativity values, the sharing is going to be even. Meaning, both fluorines are going to use those electrons equally. Whenever I have that, and I subtract 4 from 4, and I subtract the differences between my two atoms, the electronegativity values, it's whenever it falls in the range of 0.0 to 0.4, I'm referring to this as a nonpolar covalent bond. Just a quick uh, thing I have to do. Look at both of these atoms. Look at their electronegativity values. Subtract them. Do they fall within this range? Yes, they do. That means it's even sharing, and I call that a nonpolar bond. This is the next example when I have uneven sharing of electrons. Uneven sharing of electrons occurs when I have differences in my atoms, differences in sizes of them. Fluorine is smaller than oxygen. 
Because it's smaller, it has a larger electronegativity value. And when I subtract the two, I see that it actually falls in this range here. My 0 0.5, and that was 4.0 from here, minus 3.5 from here, gives me a 0 0.5 difference in electronegativity, which falls in the range of 0 0.4 to 2.0, meaning that bond right here, these guys, are considered polar covalent. What does that mean? That means there is an uneven sharing of electrons. I kind of draw this in a different way, too. My electrons are now on the move. Okay? They're not being shared evenly. Think of it as a tug of war, and fluorine's winning. Why? Because it's stronger. It is pulling the electrons closer to its own electron cloud. Okay? So it's actually bringing those electrons closer to it. And bear in mind, when you bring an electron, you are actually bringing the same charge with it. So that means this negative charge is actually going to appear now on fluorine. Fluorine has become a little bit negative, and oxygen will become, not a lot, but a little bit positive. And that is where we get this word polar from. Polar means one side negative, one side positive. They mean opposites. And when I have polar bonds, the key is means I have uneven sharing of electrons. Last scenario here. I got a crazy small atom and a crazy big atom. Okay? What's going to happen here is that this small atom is very electronegative. It's going to pull those electrons into its own electron cloud nice and full. This atom over here is going to totally lose its electrons in the process. It cannot hold on to them. It is not that strong. Okay? So it has an electronegativity value of 1.0. This one has a 3.5. Let's do some subtraction here. 3.5 minus 1.0, and I'm going to have a 2.5 difference. That 2.5 difference is greater than 2, classifying this as an ionic bond. So ionic bonds not only are between metals and non-metals, specifically, yes, I have a non-metal over here and a metal over here. That's awesome, but really what it comes down to is the difference between my electronegativity values. As long as the difference is greater than 2, I have an ionic bond. And it just so happens when I do that subtraction, I often find I'm with metals and non-metals. So, ions are created by the transfer of electrons, okay? What is my ionic bond? My ionic bond is not this right here. That's not my ionic bond anymore. My ionic bond is this. Oxygen becomes a 2 negative, calcium becomes a 2 positive, and it's a positive negative attraction, which is the bond. The electrons are no longer the bond. They've been taken. Because they've been taken, okay, they're gone. They can't be the bond anymore. Okay, so it's a big misconception that the transfer of electrons is the bond. No, it can't be. The b electrons have been taken so that you cannot take the bond. The bond becomes the negative-positive attraction. That is an ion bond or an ionic bond. Okay, guys, a couple of review questions here, okay? A couple of review questions. Before we get there, let's just check this out here, okay? Once again, we're talking about these electrons, how are they shared? If it's a nonpolar bond, they're shared totally evenly. If it's a polar bond, that means I have an uneven sharing of electron. An ionic bond is the full-on transfer or stealing of electrons. Another summary here, okay? Let's check this out here, guys. Now, put the electronegativity differences on there. In the objectives, I told you we're going to be looking at the electronegativity differences and trying to classify my bond as either nonpolar, polar, or ionic. Okay, guys, here we go. Let's wrap it up with an example or two. We got uh, what type of bond will form between an atom with an EN, electronegativity of 4.0, and one that has an electronegativity value of 1.8. And let's just do a quick subtraction problem. I have a 2.2 value here, and 2.2 is going to classify this one as an ionic bond. And that's simply based upon the differences in electronegativities. Next question. Okay, we got a value of 4.0 and a value of 2.8. What kind of bond will form? 4.0 minus 2.8. You always take the smaller, subtract it from the larger, and I end up with a 1.2 electronegativity difference. Where does that fall into? Right here. That's going to be a polar bond. So this is going to be considered a polar covalent. Whoa, excuse that. A polar covalent bond, and that tells you that there is an uneven sharing of electrons. And the last example, what type of bond will form between an atom with an electronegativity value of 3.0 and a different one of 2.8? Let's take the larger, 
3.0 minus 2.8, and I end up with a 0.2 difference. 0.2 difference classifies this as a nonpolar covalent compound. Okay, guys, once again, it all comes down to electronegativity. I think we've met the objectives here, and have a good day, and I hope this was helpful.